Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Yasser Ahmed. Today we're going to be looking at paper 3 from the CIE ICT IGCC course. We're looking at the older paper, so October, November 2015, and what I'm going to be doing is redoing the website section using Microsoft Expression Web. So I've already previously created these videos using Dreamweaver, but today I'm going to be using Expression Web. So the first thing we need to do in the source folder, we need to create a new folder and it's going to be called N15 and then this name here. So let's go to a source folder, right click your mouse, make a new folder and then enter the name for the new folder. And then what we need to do is to locate um, the following files and we need to move them into this new folder that we just created. So uh, the first thing I want to do is change the view to details. Okay. And we need to locate picture JPEG 1 to 8. So let's first um, move the pictures. So 1 to 8. If I press Control Shift, I can select multiple files. Let's move these pictures into a new folder. The next file we need to uh, move is going to be the alligator and the title JPEG picture. So it's going to be the alligator HDM. Uh, the title JPEG picture. Um, the evidence document I've already opened up, so I'm just going to leave that as it is. Uh, the payroll CSV file and the style.css. So it's basically these two here. It was actually all the files, wasn't it? So once you're inside of your folder, let's now scroll down um, to the um, website section. Okay, so here we are. So you will create uh, a new web page okay using the files download in the step two so we didn't download the files um, do not use any image more than once okay so in the older papers they did ask you to download the files uh, by going to a particular website um, in your exam the files will be given to you okay so first of all we need to create a new page it's called n15 underscore free underscore sponsor and the file extension will be .htm, which is short for HTML. So let's open up the software, Microsoft Expression Web 4. Let's create the new HTML page. So let's click new HTML. And let's save this page. Actually, you know what I want to do? Let's close any existing pages down. Go to file, new, HTML. Let's save this into our folder. So we're doing the November 2015 um, winter paper and this is a folder we created let's enter the name of the new page okay as you can see here we don't need to change the file type since we've opened up the HTML it's going to save into that format save and what we need to do is to create this table shown below so this web page must work work in all browsers and we'll have a table structure shown below table borders and grid lines must be visible so let me highlight that the table will be center line within the browser each table cell is identified with a letter and all dimensions are in pixels so the letters shown in a table must not appear on your final web page so let's first of all identify how many rows we have we've got one two three four five six rows to make the table we go to table insert table Let's enter the number of rows and the columns we have is one and two. So we can keep that as it is. Now we can specify how wide the table is going to be. So the table will be 620 pixels wide. Okay, the height will be included when we edit each cell one at a time. So make sure you select in pixels, press OK. And you'll notice the top row and the bottom row is merged across so you highlight the cells right click your mouse modify merge cells and then you highlight the bottom two cells you click on modify and then you merge the cells and now what we can do we can edit the um, cell dimensions so let's click on the first cell A we don't need to change how wide the cell is we just need to basically if you click on um, right click click on cell properties we need to specify the height. So the height will be the second number, which is 190. Okay, so in pixels, 190, press OK. 
and then the bottom row again right click cell properties we don't need to change how wide the cell is because it's already 620 the height will be 160 uh, in pixels job done right the second row is going to be 310 by 235 so we're going to go to format uh, two cells at a time so let's right click the second row cell properties so height is free uh, keep forgetting 310 and then 235 310 and the cell will be 235 pixels wide so let me double check 310 235 make sure you select pixels apply done come down the next row the third row will be 310 by 80 so let's highlight right click cell properties uh, again 310 and go down to here was it 80 then we just double check 310 by 80 yes next row let's highlight cell properties this time it's going to be 310 by 235 like the second row so 310 yeah and then it's going to be 310 by 80 so right click cell properties okay and I'm in here we enter 80 so that's that done if you go to the code you'll see basically the table cells and dimensions are in so the table is 620 pixels wide let me double check yes that's correct okay uh, we've got TR which stands for table row so we only have one TD because basically uh, we only have one cell which has been merged across the table if I highlight the second row we should have two TDs because we have we have two cells first cells here the second cells on the right this one here so we go to the code so the second row starts with TR, ends with the TR but with the backward slash. So when you want to close the tag, you have a, a backward slash. Then you have two TDs which refers to um, each cell. So in the next row, again we have two TDs because we have two cells. Again we have two cells, and again, and then finally we, the last row we only have one cell. Okay. So we've opened up the table tag, and then obviously you close with a backward slash. Right, so what's next? Um, we've done that. So in cell K, enter the text. Let me just copy this. Where is cell K? K is the cell at the bottom. So let me go to the cell at the bottom. Let's enter this text. Okay. And what we're going to do is set this as H2. So we can highlight. Um, click on um, the style menu and select H2 and then I think on a new line it says um, on a new line in the same table cell add the text edited by followed by your name center number and candidate number and set this as H3 so let me just type in edited by let me include my name Center number 5678 and then my candidate number 1234 and this will be formatted as H3 so when we attach the CSS this may change later on okay job done so enter the text so let me just first of all highlight this to say it's completed so we're going to enter the text alligator and cell D so where is D and E so oh, where are we going so D and E is the third row Okay, so let's type in alligator here. This is E. Yep, so in that uh, cell, we're going to enter elephant. Let's click, paste. And then I think um, H and J, which is uh, the second to last row, we're going to add giraffe and rhinoceros. Okay, so giraffe, 
and rhinoceros. And all of these need to be formatted as um, H2. So let's do that now. So again, we can highlight the text one at a time. Apply H2. And again, this may change later on when we um, apply our styles uh, style sheet or attach our style sheet. So after I've done alligator, I just want to show you if I go to the code view. So as before and at the end of the fonts, you got H2 and H2. This one closes with a backward slash. If I come to the bottom of the page, you notice edited by Yasser Ahmed, center number, candidate number, it's H3. And then this was also H2. Let's go back to design. So place in cell A the, the image um, with the title at the end. So cell A is going to be the first cell, as you can see. So let's go to first cell. Let's go to insert picture from file. Uh, let me just go backwards to 2015 winter. And then we want the title picture. Always include alternative text. So let me include title. This text will be displayed if the picture does not load up. If you go to the code, you can see the alternative text um, here. And the image is basically here. So, and then you got the dimensions of the image as well. Right, so that's that done. Okay, question 33, using the most appropriate images from um, basically N15 underscore 3 underscore 1 to 8 at the end, place the image of an alligator in cell B, an elephant in cell F, a giraffe in, oh sorry, an alligator in B, elephant in C, giraffe in F, and a rhinoceros in G. So we're going to be basically using, if I change to details, from picture one ending one to picture ending eight okay so what we need to do is um so let's do the alligator and b so where was b b is going to be here and c is the second cell in the second row okay so let's get those two pictures in first of all so alligator insert picture from file um this is the alligator let's include the alternative text because if the picture doesn't load up uh, the text will be shown instead and you can see question 36 make sure each image has an appropriate alternative text attribute so I'm doing it now as I'm importing the pictures okay if you forget to do it you can always right click go to picture properties and include it here as well okay so that's the um, alligator let's insert the elephant picture so that's the elephant picture let's get the alternative text in Okay, um, and then the giraffe picture is going to be an F and then rhinoceros in G. So I'm guessing, yeah, so F and G are the big two cells. So insert picture from file again. That's the giraffe. Let me get the alternative text again. And the rhinoceros is going to be next to it. So insert picture from file. Rhinoceros is this one here, and the alternative text is shown here as well. Press OK. So obviously it's a bit big, doesn't really matter. So let's see what the next question is asking us to do. Uh, make sure that that each image is placed in step 33, which is, was this step here, is 300 pixels wide and maintains the aspect ratio. So let's start with this one here. Picture properties, appearance, uh, 300 pixels wide, maintaining the aspect ratio. That's okay. Uh, picture properties, appearance, yep, yeah, that's fine. Picture properties, appearance, yeah, that's fine. And this one looks fine as well. Let me double check. Okay. If you do go to the code, you can see for each of the pictures, you've got the size here. 
and that's the uh, alligator, giraffe, rhinoceros, and I think there's an elephant one there as well. Yep. Right, so that's that done. Right, what we're doing now? Use the image of the alligator placed in step 33 and a text alligator to create hyperlinks to the page. Um, so this page I think is in our folder. Yep, so we're going to link to this page here. Let me hold up. Uh, yep, so still under construction, but it doesn't matter. So what it says is basically um, use the image and also the text. Okay, so let's do the image first to create a hyperlink to the page okay so what we do we click on uh, the picture we go to hyperlink um, existing file or web page and we want to click on alligator okay and then the target frame is going to be in a new window called underscore gator so what you need to do first of all select new window and then what we can do is type in here the gator okay press OK OK and let's do the same thing to alligator so hyperlink right click hyperlink same file OK target frame a uh, new window gate tool OK OK and then you can see the blue um, underline shows you it's, it's a hyperlink so if we go into the code again and this is what's going to get marked and um, the target is underscore gator that's the link so href we're going to link to this page here okay and then we also got the uh, the link if i highlight this i think that's for the picture um yeah so the picture is now highlighted okay so what's left to do so we've done that one we already included the alternative text as we added the pictures in so like i said if you do forget you can right click go to picture properties and include the alternative text um, okay so now we have to attach the style sheet um, n15 underscore 3 underscore style to your web page and then save your web page so to attach the CSS we go to attach a style sheet browse and it's going to be this one here that's okay okay as you can see the page has changed the background has gone to green um, text also changed slightly as well so that's fine display the page in the browser in the evidence documents replace text image one with screenshots of the browser window so if we go to save and then go to file preview in the browser go to chrome let's make it bigger let's zoom it all the way out let's take a print screen and then if we go to our evidence document, let's paste in the print screen here. So we can crop this part on. We need to make sure we keep the browser window. Can make this a bit bigger. Yeah, copy that. Um, actually, just let me, I just remembered something now. Let me go back. If I go to the top of this page here, um, Okay, this web page must work in all browsers, that's fine. Uh, the table will be center line in the browser window, so we haven't done that yet. Uh, the table borders and grid lines must be visible. Now, to center align this, there's two things we can do. We can either click on a table, you can click on the center here, and then if you go to code, at the top of the table, you can see a line is center. Now, also, if I just press Control Z, put it back, whoops, uh, that's too far gone. Uh, Okay, let's just put the table back to where it was. Um, so if I highlight the table, let's put it back to the left. Um, or oh, it's not letting me, let me just delete this um, align center. Okay, so it's gone back to what, where it was. Now, in previous mark schemes, um, to center align a table, this is what they've basically asked you to do. If you go to the code, um, for table style so if you put a semicolon here to finish that part of the code if you type in margin left auto semicolon and then margin right auto semicolon so this is a bit of css that we've, we've embedded 
by making both margins left and right automatic this should also center align a table which it has so in the mark schemes in the past they have looked for this piece of code so it's a good thing I went back and double checked um, now what we're going to do is um, let's save let's go to our browser window so I don't want this print screen I want this print screen to show the table has been center aligned okay you can check the hyperlinks as well in the browser so that opens in a new window and that also opens a new window so if we go to my evidence document so I nearly made a mistake there lucky I just I uh, went back and double checked let's crop off the middle part okay let's zoom in a little bit there we go and I think the last part is to copy the HTML so so display page in the browser replace the text image one with screenshots so we do not in your evidence document um, replace the text HTML with the HTML source so what we need to do is go to code and we're going to copy all of this code uh, so let me just right click copy into our evidence document so in this code we have basically got evidence to see the star sheet has been attached uh, the settings the size of a table 601 pixels wide the table center line because both left and right margins are automatic okay and then you got the spacing so the, the sizing of each of the cells um, and the content any pictures that have gone into the cells as well um, any text um, that's been included okay here at the bottom as well and any hyperlinks that we may have done so all that information is in your HTML that's what's going to get marked so it's really important uh, you include that so do I need to get rid of the HTML yeah replace this with your code okay so it doesn't really matter if the HTML is big as long as um, the examiner can see it and can can give you the marks save the evidence document and we've come to the end of this paper okay so thanks for watching this video so the only year group I've got to do now is 2017 using Microsoft Web Expression um, please comment below if you would like to see any types of um, videos um, please like and share this video and please show your support to the channel and subscribe below as well thanks again for your time